Welcome back. It is International Women's Day, a day to celebrate women's achievements and highlight struggles and inequalities. The theme this year is Break the Bias. Regina author and filmmaker Zarka Nawaz knows all about breaking the bias. She's released a new book today and joins me now. Congratulations. Thanks, Sam. Your book, Jamila Green Ruins Everything, is a satire that touches on terrorism and foreign policy. What inspired it? It was 2014, and suddenly this new group, ISIS, emerged in the headlines. And everyone, you know, the news pundits were saying, oh, you know, this is what Muslims do. They become radicalized. They become terrorists. They try to destabilize democratic institutions. It's just, you know, a normal day for Muslims. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> oh, no, this cannot be happening. Muslims are forever trying to kind of win the PR game and try to explain to people, like, this is not us. There, there's something else to this. And I decided that the smartest way to deal with this, because I only have one marketable skill, and that is to write comedy, and that people enjoy comedy. And this was one way of, of communicating a very complex political situation in a way that was very easily digestible. It would be in a novel form, if, even if you didn't care about um, American foreign policy, that was fine. This could just be a beach read for people who just wanted a fun international spy novel with and yummy South Asia desserts, or for people who really did care about American foreign policy, the Russian invasion of Afghanistan, the two Gulf Wars, they could get a lot of information and possibly do more background research. So it was a book that was meant um, on many different levels for many different readers. And that was my intention when I started writing it in 2014. If you compare this to your TV series, the comedy Little Mosque on the Prairie, what do you hope to achieve with this book? What I hope to achieve is that people can understand political context, like what was happening in the world when this organization emerged, how imperialism and colonialism and wars and invasions affect human beings. And I feel that this is the best time politically for this book to come out because people have a different um, state of events right now. I mean, looking at Ukraine, they're looking at how people are suffering because of bombings and an invasion. And these things happen to another group of people in another time. And so there's empathy now where you can relate to somebody else that went through something similar that had to say a different faith and a different skin color than you. And I feel that now people are like saying, hmm, this is so interesting. I can relate to the Ukraine because maybe they look like me. I have the same faith, but they're suffering in such a terrible way. There was a whole other group of people that suffered in a very similar way and so I feel like now there's a shift in the narrative of who's considered dangerous in the world and I feel this book is coming out at a really great time because I think it opens up people's minds to see something from a different perspective. That takes me to my next question which is about the editorial you wrote in the Globe and Mail. You say the so-called freedom convoy and the Russian president are making Muslims look good. What do you mean? <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever be alive to to hear flabbergasted reporters refer to, you know, right wing white men as extremists, domestic terrorists, insurgents, you know, they're, they are destabilizing our democratic principles, they may be spreading to other countries. Um, all these words were always reserved just for Muslims. And now I'm <clears throat> hearing them <clears throat> being told about white people, and particularly the ex white extremist men, and these groups that are coming out. And it's an incredible change in narrative. And I didn't think this would ever happen. And so to have a book that comes out at this time when I have to use the word Muslim and terrorist in the same sentence, I didn't want to write a book that reinforced that stereotype. So I feel like this narrative shift gives my book an opening that people can read it and say, okay, you know, this is interesting. And then be able to see, you know, white men acting badly and saying, okay, this also happens to say someone in my own community. So I can't now, why, you know, wash an entire community with one brush and say only they are the terrorists because it happens to all people under different circumstances. And so I feel that now this book is coming out at a time when people can see that. It is International Women's Day. What do you think about on this day? I think about peace. I wish that we would have a peaceful planet. I wish that everybody could, you know, do all the things that we are here in Saskatchewan are able to do, you know, go out, take our children to school, go to work, come home and not have to worry about being bombed. And, and my heart goes out to the Ukrainian population right now because they are going through so much. And I wish and hope that it ends very, very quickly. Thank you so much for your time, Zarka, and congratulations on the new book. Thank you so much, Sam. Zarka Nawaz is an author and filmmaker from Regina. Her new book, Jamila Green Ruins Everything, is out today.